Hey, what's up everyone? This is uh, Eddie from uh, Average Joe Drinks. And I'm Vince, and we are here making drinks suitable for the average show. Today's going to be a fun show because we have one that was a request from Bob from California. He's the one that, a uh, little honorary, remember him? Yes. And then one that's a, a popular drink that requests or excuse me, search on Google, correct? Right. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what drinks people really want to know about. Everybody knows things like the daiquiri and the margarita and how to take a tequila shot, although I think we need... We might do that show. To do. How to take a tequila shot. That would be great. <laughs> um, but, you know, some of these drinks are things that people express interest in, so we're going to show you how they're done. So mine is a request from Bob, and mine is going to be a rum ball, which is fireball and horchata. So what well, horchata with rum? Con ron. Con ron? Horchata con ron? That's what it says on there. We're not going to have ron, but we are going to have rum. Because that's what's in And yours? Well, the rum runner is an old recipe from the 50s, um, tropical. We have a lot of debates on what really makes a drink taste tropical, and I think that a lot of it has to do with the rum and the, and the pineapple juice. So we'll go into that, and I'll let you get started on yours. Yeah. Because Eddie usually goes first. It's comforting when things are reliable. We don't like change. That's okay. <laughs> so this is a really simple drink. Um, it's a fun drink. Now, Fireball has just taken off over the past year or two. It's, to me, I think it tastes like an alcoholic hot tamale is kind of my take on hot Fireball. Hot tamale, yeah. They're good. I like it, too. Yeah, it is very good. So this is just equal parts. Um, we're going to do about an ounce and a half of horchata, or excuse me, the, the rum chata, which is horchata and rum, and then an ounce and a half of Fireball. Cause what is horchata? Do you know? I don't know. Horch it's one of my favorite drinks. When my girlfriend and I go out to Mexican restaurants, that's one of my go-to drinks. Is it rice-based or do you it, know? It is rice-based. Um, I don't know a tremendous amount about it other than you get two kinds of drinks. You're going to go to a, a traditional Mexican food restaurant, the uh, chata and like the tamarind. So those are the drink, the flavors you're going to get out of your two drinks. But yes, it is rice-based. It's kind of like rice milk is kind of what it... It's with cinnamon, cinnamon, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So we're going to do not an ounce and a half because I assume you want one too, right? You always make two drinks. Always make two drinks. We need friends. And if not, we'll make friends. You know, people are going to be watching these videos and get come to the conclusion that we have no friends because we say that in almost every video. Well, if we, we have no friends, if we say that, then maybe you'll feel for us and want to be our friend. And if you and do, subscribe. You subscribe, come by, we'll make you a drink. It'll be fun. So we're going to do three ounces of the rum chata, which really just kind of looks like milk. It's not really my favorite looking drink, but man, it smells really, really good. And now we're going to do three ounces of. The fireball. alcoholic hot tamale, or fireball. Doesn't really look pretty when we put that in there after that, does it? Yeah, but at least you're rinsing out the rumshada so that you get it all. <laughs> That's right. Waste not, want not. Waste not, want not. So we're going to shake this up. We'll wait. I'll shake this up first. These are the glasses that you saw um, our Halloween episode that we are, have put out. We got these for a dollar a piece at the uh, Goodwill store. Goodwill store, if you go to the right areas, are amazing. You can find some amazing glasses. Um, found some good old fashioned glasses, found these glasses. Really, really cool. So take, take a look at it, check it out. Kind of does look like milk, doesn't it? So what I did with the, uh, the rim there, I put just a little bit of a fireball down on a plate and then I put some cinnamon in another plate and I just kind of coated the rims, get you a little extra cinnamon flavor there. And you can never have too much fireball. <laughs> Your wife can. You might. <laughs> different story, <laughs> different show. So what I'm gonna do to garnish that, just a little, little cinnamon stick that I probably should've got some. Longer ones? <laughs> longer cinnamon sticks. Don't worry about the cinnamon sticks. Garnishes are dumb anyways. They're not. We'll talk about garnishes. There's a real good reason for garnishes. Remember we are talking about the sense of smell? Yes. I have been taught that garnishes need to be right next to the straw. So you can smell so it. So that it hits you in the face, so yeah. to speak. Choose the right cinnamon stick if you're going to make the, uh, the rum ball there. Actually, but that's still going to work though. It'll work. Once you drink a little bit more, you'll see it. Anyways, that's a rum ball. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Please keep your requests coming. You know, I actually like that a lot more than I expected to. That's really cool. 
And the, it, you know, it's kind of neat because the, uh, the horchata, the rum chata, it kind of mellows the cinnamon out just a little bit. Mm -hmm. But the horchata, again, kind of reminds you of the milk, but having the, the uh, fireball in there kind of picks it up a little bit. So they really balance out nicely. We're going to drink all these. We're going to have to make new ones so at least it can have pictures. Good point. Woo! Anyways, there's your, uh, your rum chata. Thanks again, Bob, for the request. Yeah, that was neat. I, I'd actually never heard of that before. Do I have cinnamon on my face? No? no. I'm good? Okay, just checking. All right, Vince, what do you got? Well, I'm going to do a rum runner. A rum runner is another one of those tropical drinks that everybody seems to have too much of on vacation. <laughs> the history of them as so many of these tropical drinks is in doubt. Everybody wants to fight about who came up with it. Um, as far as I can tell, though, the actual underlying story that is true is that it came from Florida. Um, there was a bar called the Holiday Isle Tiki Bar that had too much liqueur. Mm. And they had a shipment coming in and they needed to come up with a drink special. So they threw a whole bunch of stuff that didn't normally sell into a cocktail glass and tweaked it until it tasted good and came up with a winner. Um, for that reason, we've got a couple things that are not real common. Blackberry liqueur, banana liqueur. Um, we have been reminded that this is average Joe drinks. Some mm -hmm. of this stuff is not necessarily going to be in your average pantry. Um, some of it can be, what do you call it, substituted? Okay. Like blackberry liqueur, some people will use blackberry brandy. As a matter of fact, it's supposedly Ooh. better with blackberry brandy. Sounds good. You can just put regular brandy and garnish with blackberries. But this type of stuff, even though you may not have it in your pantry, you can probably find at a, a, a BevMo or something like that. Yeah, right? it's, it's actually easy to find. Yeah. Um, the question then becomes, do you want to buy a whole bottle in exchange for a cocktail or two? So. You could do like a blackberry lemonade with that. That'd be pretty yeah, good. Yeah, there's, there's all kinds yeah. of different things that you can do. And as we get through more and more of these videos, what we'd like to be able to do is make it so that somebody can search our website and cross-reference recipes and say, hey, you know what, I bought this bottle of black layer liqueur, it turns out that I haven't used much of it, how can I burn through it? Which, to come full circle, is how this drink was created in the first place. It's like a kitchen sink drink, right? Exactly. Oh, nice. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, we're gonna have two Collins glasses full of ice. I love the fact that we can be solid enough to bar that. It's a beautiful thing. Um, we are going to make two. I need my drink mixer. I'm gonna grab my stuff. Don't grab your stuff. Yes. If you are, let me know. I'll Donald know Trump. <laughs> the election's coming up. Remember to vote. <laughs> Please vote. <laughs> Please vote. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with a couple of glasses full of ice. Collins glasses work well. This glass, uh, this drink is going to just kind of fill it up. We are looking at... This is one of my favorite glasses. I don't know why I just like that. I don't even, even know Tom Collins. Thomas a nice guy. I he met him good. once. He's a good guy. And his brother John. <laughs> Different show. And then they adopted somebody named Jorge. Good family. Orange juice. An ounce and a half. A dash of grenadine. Since we're making two drinks, I'm going to do a little bit larger dash. And if you want to really look into it, it turns out that a dash, technically, mm -hmm. is an eighth of a teaspoon. If you want to get really detail oriented. Sure. I mean, but you know, but gives you a sense of how much to do. And I think that realistically what this is all about is color. Yeah, and I think that's good. When, when you can understand, like people always say dash and, and, and dip pinch and things like that, to have a little better understanding of how much it is, I think it'll make you do a little bit better as far as the recipes. Right, and if you understand what you're after. I mean, grenadine is sweet, right. but you're not putting enough in here to really sweeten the drink. You're sure. just giving it some color. Um, sweet and sour mix. This can be substituted for lemon juice, lime juice, that sort of thing, but the, when you buy it over the counter sweet and sour, it's usually sweetened. It's not as harsh. Not quite lemonade, but sweet. Right. Yeah. So a couple ounces of that per drink. I'm gonna put four in here because we're making two. We have coconut rum. About a quarter ounce per, and the idea there is truly just to give it a, a taste of coconut to keep it tropical. Yeah, and that's one that you're talking about, tropical flavors. Coconut, pineapple, those are definitely um, grouped in there with your tropical flavors. So. Right. And that's it. When we were doing some taste testing earlier, uh, executive producer Kim was saying as we were trying the different recipes, she wanted to taste more tropical, and that's kind of how we came up with this recipe. Right. Or I should say decided upon this recipe. 
Right. Yeah, he tests these things thoroughly. We have teams of experts, teams namely named Lisa and Ken. We sacrifice our livers for you. You should send them thank you notes <laughs> and Christmas gifts. Livers or Kim and Lisa? Gifts. No, no, but to the, to the livers oh. or to Kim and Lisa. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> and if you know anybody with a liver donation, that doesn't make. Okay. Um, Take ourselves off the donor list. So while we're bantering, I did an Sorry. ounce of banana liquor, an ounce of the blackberry liquor. Again, you can substitute things like banana brandy, that sort of thing if you have it. Um, the sweet and sour grenadine, we're good. So we're going to shake this up. I was just testing Vince's uh, focus there as I was trying to distract him. I have no focus. <laughs> okay. This is why we're trying to make our living make some drinks. <laughs> focus is over there. Now one of the things that's kind of fun about drinks too is the garnishes. Um, garnishes, as you saw in Eddie's from Chata can be a source of frustration. However, when you're taking your drink, your sense of smell kicks in. And these things, even though they look pretty and you don't eat them, they actually will affect how the, how the drink tastes to you when you drink it. And I think that's the difference between a functional garnish and just one for looks. I mean, something like this citrus and you get the nice aroma, that's a functional garnish. Right, when you get into these Bloody Marys that have a turkey hanging out of them, that's an appetizer. That, yeah, that's a meal. <laughs> <laughs> so here you go. Here's, here's a rum runner, very close to the original recipe. Cheers. Wow. Good, huh? That's very good. Yeah, I think you really like hit the tropical thing spot on. Well, I think the garnish helps. Um, no umbrella in something like this. Those are more for the beach comer type things. Now when you start getting into rum runners and pina coladas and blue hawaii's there's a ton of different nuances that people do. Some people will blend them, some people you know will serve them over the rocks. We've mentioned this before. The older generation from the 50s and 60s when they were making cocktails they were a little bit stronger, they were, they were less sweet and most of the original drinks were on the rocks. Right. Newer generations, you know, my kids, for example, they like their drinks blended. You can look this up. If you go to our website, we have blended versions of these drinks. AbitureDrinks.com. .com. Which we fully expect to see you at. Make your questions, comments, complaints there or on YouTube. We need subscriptions on YouTube. Please subscribe. Like today, we have prizes. We have, we're f as of this morning, we're at 61. We have 14, 14 more before the next prize goes out. Now, if you don't have 14 friends, one, you might need to make a couple extra drinks. Make but 14 drinks. You have a couple of friends. You can, you can pass that along. Um, as we say, please enjoy these drinks. Please drink responsibly. Drink responsibly. That's very important. And that's it. yeah, I think that's it. What else do we have to say? Hi to all of our fans. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I wish we could turn the camera around for the reactions. Think of the reactions from. Because <laughs> I think that'd be perfect. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.